folks. Welcome to the Nerdy Photographer Podcast. I am your host, Casey Patchett. If you haven't listened to the podcast before, in addition to bringing you informative and entertaining photography and business-related content, I also go on adventures with the crew of the Starship Fibonacci. Right now, the crew and I are pursuing smuggler, rogue, and sometimes spaceship mechanic Amdo Bane across the mausoleum planet Necropolis Majora. The whole planet is basically a giant graveyard, and Hamdo has been digging around because there's something buried here that he thinks will lead him to the camera obscura. We are closing on him, Captain. Thanks, Fibonacci. Let me introduce the episode, and we'll capture that ne'er-do-well once and for all. In this episode, I delve into grief and creativity both how grief can stifle our creative urges and how creativity can bring us slowly out of that grief. I explore these subjects with two fellow photographers, Erica Lehman and Lindsay Turner, who each have been on their own grief journeys. More on that after this short break. Okay, Hamdo, we've got you now. What's up? got good news and I've got bad news. Give me the bad news first. Well, your website is incredibly slow and it's susceptible to being hacked. I had a suspicion that was the case. What do you prescribe? Use SiteGround as your website host. They offer fast, secure hosting for small and medium-sized websites, as well as managed WordPress hosting. Can I pick up SiteGround at my local pharmacy? No. You'll need to go to nerdyphotographer.com slash recommends slash siteground to find out more. Thanks. So, what's the good news? You have six months to live. That's good news? Better than a week. Well, you've got me there, Doc. In the fall of 2020, I rushed home to see my parents after receiving a call that my father who had been fighting a rare form of cancer for over a decade, was going into hospice. When I arrived, I also found out that my mother was terminally ill. And in the course of two weeks, I lost not only both of my parents, but also a beloved uncle who I had spent many summers with growing up and who got me into a number of the nerdy topics that would later shape my life, such as computers and video games found myself untethered in the world, and as a creative person, I found my creativity completely drained from me. There was just no juice in the tank. There were no reserves to draw from. Every fiber of my being was still dealing with the trauma I had just experienced, which, as someone who uses their creativity to express themselves, uh, was doubly devastating. I took a hiatus from work, from this podcast, I cried, I grieved, I still had nothing. I had a list of projects that I had come up with before all this happened, and I had absolutely no interest in doing any of them. So I reached out to fellow creatives through online forums and asked them about their own journeys with grief and creativity. Along the way, I came across two other photographers who had been on similar journeys with grief. Erica Lehman. My name is Erica Lehman, and I am a wedding photographer in Hudson Valley, New York. The name of my business is the Alice Photography, and Alice is my cat. (laughs) (laughs) And Lindsay Turner. My name is Lindsay Turner. Um, I am the owner of Lindsay Victoria Photography, uh, which is based in Litchfield County, Connecticut. I photograph newborns and families, as well as um, branding photography for small business owners and artists. They were both generous enough to share their own grief stories here on the podcast, and I will let them do that in their own words, with Erica going first. It, I feel like I was well acquainted with grief at a young age. Um, I lost a lot of family members before my mom passed away. My mom passed away when I was 23. And she was like my best friend. She raised me. She took really really good care of me. And I often call her like my rescuer because she was um, a young divorced mother coming out of an abusive 
um, relationship. And um, I don't think I would have survived if I hadn't had her as a child. So even though I had all of these different experiences with grief when I was younger with, you know, aunts and uncles passing away and cousins passing away, um, losing my mom was huge for me. Um, and so that was just, that was just so much, you know, when you're 23, you're like newly out of college, you're trying to establish, you know, your career path, your life. Trying to figure out who you are. Yeah, absolutely. And so much of who I was was tied up in my mom. Um, I look like her. I sound like her. I have similar interests to her. Hey, my dad called me or he texted me and he was like, hey, Erica, you, you really got to come home. Like, your mom's not doing well. And I remember being like, oh, like, this is it. And so then I went home for two weeks. She went into that state. I, you know, she remained comatose for most of it. She, you know, came out of it for one hour one day, which is such a gift. Yeah, that um, lucidity. And then she, yes, yeah. And then she passed away. And so I had a, I had a wedding about a month after that. And honestly, so she passed away in July. I don't remember anything Mm. from July, like the day after she passed away and like her wake and her funeral. I don't remember anything past that until around the holidays, except little things here and there. And I remember this wedding and I remember it was in a church and I was sitting kind of like up in like the altar area because I was given that clearance that I could go up there and take photos and just kind of stay out of the way. And I remember watching them and taking photos of them during their ceremony. And it was so beautiful. And I felt so glad that I had this focus on that day. But I also remember thinking, uh, like, this hurt not even for me, but for my dad. Like, when I think about losing my mom, I often think of my dad's grief. And how does he live through that? How does he go through that? And I remember thinking, wow, like, they're creating this new life together here, and I don't know what's going to happen next for my dad, how he's going to move forward, how things are going to change. How do you lose a soulmate, right? Right. And I think that, like, having that lens of being very aware, almost paper aware, of what can be lost right, impacted oh, yeah. my creativity, right, in different ways. Um, like, it, it made me sometimes not want to photograph people. Meanwhile, Lindsay was also dealing with the loss of a parent, but there was a loss of other things as well. So on the surface, um, my grief experience was my father's passing. Um, but grief is not black and white, um, nor is it always just about the death of a person. Um, right. For me, it was sort of a prolonged two-year period of change. Um, my family and I moved from our beloved Brooklyn neighborhood, which I never thought we would leave, um, <laughs> back back to our hometown in Litchfield County, Connecticut, to be closer to both sets of our parents. And we moved in with my parents for what I thought would be just a few months while we closed up in New York, sold our apartment, found a house here, and a few months turned into a year. And then my father, um, who had struggled probably about 10 years with his health, he'd had some serious smaller strokes, and then um, had cancer that he beat, and, um, you know, he wasn't doing ex- exceedingly well, but we right. didn't have any cause for immediate concern. Um, and after a year, uh, right around Christmas time, actually, at the end of December, um, he was uh, seen by a doctor, and apparently his cancer had spread everywhere. And we were told he had six weeks left, <laughs> which was really startling yeah. um, and sort of a... <laughs> Uh, very shocking for all of us. That being said, we had spent a year there. Um, my son, who at the time was four, um, four to five, uh, in the year that we spent with his family, he had, you know, every day with his grandfather, um, who he might have seen two or three times if he had still been living in, in the city. So for me, that was just a huge blessing um, that my son remembers my father um, and that we'd all had that sort of unexpected and unplanned bonus time together. Yeah. You know, how did all of us have to move and then your father's passing, how did that affect uh, your business and your creativity in general? Um, For me, it kind of felt frozen in place. 
um, so much of it fell out of my control, which is not a place that I thrive personally. Um, so I had only just started maybe five months before we ended up leaving New York. Um, I had just started portfolio building and really deciding, is this something that I want to, to try to do um, and try to make a living doing? So I had sort of just begun and then had to start over again. And then my father passed. And so I just, I was frozen. Um, I didn't have the emotional um, energy or motivation to really dig in for everything that it would take to start all over in a new community, um, you know, to build my website from scratch and to build new clientele from scratch and really hone my voice um, and decide, you know, how I wanted to communicate and how I would build these new relationships. Uh, and wherever you are in your career as a creative, experiencing loss can make it feel like there's an incredible void in your life. I spoke to Eric about that a little bit. As a creative person, it's it just saps everything out of you. Oh yeah, you're just exhausted. Like there's there's nothing there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like nothing. You know, you're like, what do, what am I doing? Like who? Uh, it yeah, it, it that you're right. It's just gone. It's it's so shocking to you, your system, your mind, your brain, your heart. Like it's just it's just so much all at once. And you're like, what do I do? And in some instances, your work can even feel like a reminder of your grief. It's been 10 years since my mom passed away, and I still cry at every single one. Yeah. Because I would have danced with my mom. You know, I would have had her walk her, me down the aisle with my dad. Um, and she wasn't able to be there at my wedding. She died a few years before my wedding. And so the fact that these people have their parents with them on their wedding day is, like, mm -hmm. such a gift. And it's, to me, such a gift to photograph that for them is to create and, and capture these moments for them in in their memories, you know? Yeah. It goes by so quickly. It's great. So what do you think the turning point was for you in dealing with your own grief? Hmm. Um, that's a good question. I've thought about this. So as my mom was sick, we knew she was sick. We knew she was terminally ill, um, I started going to therapy before she actually got into this state of not not being able to communicate or anything like that, before she really got to, like, the end stages of her life, because I was so anxious. Um, like, I would wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning every single day, like, so anxious. I felt like I always had to be texting her, calling her, like, I had to hold on to her. And I think being in therapy beforehand actually really helped me to deal with what happened after. I don't think there was any sort of turning point, but I do think that I had from the beginning an inherent knowledge that this will suck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no getting around it. It will yep. suck. And you have to go through it in order to move forward. There's no way. You can't stay here. You can absolutely take time to process. There's no getting over it. Right. But knowing that this will suck and I can't skip it. Yeah. This is part of my story. I can't skip it. And right. the fact that I could grieve, um, the fact that I was given time to grieve by myself, the fact that I was able to give myself that permission really helped because I feel like so much in like American culture, it's like, oh, like, you know, somebody died, here's a casserole, let's, you know, move on forward. Oh, and get over forget. it. Move yeah, on. exactly. Right. And you, you can't. It's, it's everybody's grief is different. Everybody's pattern is different. Everybody's path is different. And just knowing that my own path would be my own path was really helpful. When I asked Lindsay the same question about what the turning point for her was, we got on to the need for having some sort of anchor in your life. The minute you said anchor, um, the sort of contrast that I thought of was I felt untethered. Yeah. Um, and that would be probably the best way to describe it. So just having that physical um, anchor and touchstone of having my own space um, to sort of reassess, um, then I was really able to, to dig in. The other thing that really helped me um, as we got settled um, was to build, obviously actively build new relationships and friendships, but also to volunteer in my community, um, which made me feel 
purposeful. Um, and it also was this sort of silver lining of introducing me to so many people in our community that I wouldn't have otherwise known. Um, yeah. And that that's really what sort of skyrocketed and pushed me forward as I continued to grow my business for the last few years. Um, and I, I didn't really realize it at the time. It's not why I did it. Um, right. But that sort of entry point um, really allowed me to, to really dig in and, and build a community here. So what advice would you give to other creatives who are here in LA? Time. And that's not really very helpful, but I think giving yourself the space and grace to feel what you're feeling. Um, ask for help if you need it. Um, I think some of it depends, of course, on where you are in your business. I was at the very, um, very beginning stages of mine. Um, so I wasn't um, in a position where I was completely dependent on the income from my business. I was still transitioning. But if you were, you know, five, ten years into a thriving business, um, it might be harder to step back. Um, maybe it's as simple as when you get those new inquiries, um, refer them to someone else and just don't take on more than you can. You know, honor the contracts you have and hire someone to do the stuff that is drudgery that you just don't have the emotional space for and maybe just take a few less opportunities moving forward until you feel ready to give it your all. The advice that I've uh, I received from a lot of people is eventually like, taking the time for yourself. I mean, like one, it's one thing to say, like, it's going to take time before you feel better. But taking time for you, like taking it for your personal self doesn't mean like, I'm going to take a month off or I'm going to take, you know, three months, you know, and then everything's going to be fine. I think that what people need to understand is when people say like, take some time for yourself, it could mean five minutes. It could mean an hour. It could mean the day, whatever it is, whatever you need to sort of process your feelings, like that's what you need. And you're not going to know, like there's no magic formula to how much time you're going to need, but like taking those little things, I think that, especially when you're running your own business and you find yourself, you know, sort of, you're married to your business <laughs> and yeah. you spend a lot of time on it and you spend a lot of things and you have to, you feel this need to like keep going all the time and to keep building and, you know, reaching out to people and you, it, it becomes sort of a machine um, and shutting the machine off for a while uh, can feel scary uh, but also, like, you know, you don't, if you don't have the energy because you're grieving to take care of it or to keep things up, it's just going to damage it, your business in the long run. I think, you know, if you're trying to do things that you don't have the emotional capacity or the energy to do. I asked Erica the same question about what advice she would have for creatives, and she echoed the point of taking time for yourself to heal when you need it. Right, and to know it's not going to be quick. Yeah. And some days will be good and some days will be bad. And just knowing that, you know, you you have this grief for a reason. It will impact you in various different ways. Um, and if, like, you're kind of pre-grieving, you know, if somebody yeah. in your life is in the stages of passing away or you know they will pass away, like, take the time to actually say goodbye to them. Right. Um, I, I did that for my mom, and it was the worst. I I just laid my head in her lap, and I said, I'm really going to miss you. And she said, I know. And that, to me, though, is a very treasured memory that I acknowledge that she was going to be gone. She acknowledged that she was going to be gone. And it was okay to do that. You know, we didn't have to skip over it. We didn't have to act like things were going to be okay. Right. You don't have to pretend that that's not going to happen. You have to take it day by day, you know? Like, you can't force yourself to go any faster or do anything differently. You'll process the way that you process it. You're in the stage of your life. Right. Oh, I, I, I think that our grief and going through things like this actually helps us connect with others in different and more profound ways. And that we can still serve people in very good ways, even if we're not invited. Um, especially because we're people, too. Right. And people go through grief, but, like, how do you announce it? Like a billboard, right? Yeah. And what I found for people is that over the past 10 years, I've opened up more and more about my own grief journey on 
to know my social media and what I share online and blogs and things of that nature. And it was very interesting because this was not my intention. Um, but in sharing, it actually brought some really wonderful clients into my life. Mm. Clients that had also lost parents or lost grandparents that served as parents to them, lost siblings, lost very close aunts and uncles. And they ended up wanting to work with me because I understood what they had lost. Right. Um, and I think that's important to note that we don't have to skim over who we are. That losing my mom helped me to step more into my own ideas of service and support for my clients. You know, sometimes in the wedding industry, it can be like a factory and like, who's paying me what? What am I getting from these people? So like, how can we serve them? Right. You know? Um, and loss doesn't go away. Like, if you lose someone you love, you, it just doesn't go away. But over time, and you're able to give yourself that time to actually grieve and ask for help if you need help. Like, mental health is no joke. You know, if you need to speak to a therapist, if you need to talk to your close friends and loved ones, do it. Um, you don't have to go through it by yourself if that's not how you process. Um, right. But now that I've had some space, I can really focus on the things that I loved about him and the joyful memories and, um, you know, talking with my son about all the things that made him great or just telling silly stories um, to keep that memory alive for him and for us, uh, you know, for myself as well. Um, so you, once you have some space, you might be able to focus on some projects that help you remember your, your loved ones, uh, whether that's, you know, making a photo album or journaling some memories or interviewing other family members about your loved ones, um, whatever it is for you, you can sort of focus creatively on it in a way that will bring you joy instead of feeling just completely devastated by it every time you consider it. And grief does not only come in the form of losing a loved one. It could come in other more ambiguous forms, such as the end of a relationship, romantic or otherwise, loss of a job, chronic illness, or even just aging. In the end, we all find that grief and creativity are a cyclical process. Some of the greatest cultural riches in our world come as the result of processing grief. The pyramids of Giza are burial mounds. The tragedies of Shakespeare were written after he experienced great loss. Even Homer's Iliad is a tragedy. But it is only after coming to terms with our own grief that we can let those energies flow into our creativity and help us heal. Many great creative accomplishments in human history owe much to confronting head-on heartache and loss. In a July 2002 article on grief and creativity, Mary Herzog wrote, Grief, fully acknowledged and expressed, can inspire and infuse our work and our life with greater vitality and renewed purpose. Hey, Doc. Thanks for seeing me. No problem. I'm glad we got that whole other thing cleared up. Uh, yeah, I have to say, you scared me pretty bad when you told me I only had six months to live. And you would have. In the wild, wild west. But luckily, we have creams for that these days. I appreciate it. But I didn't ask you to come in to discuss life-saving salves and ointments. What is it, Doc? It's your WordPress website. It's old and outdated, and it needs a fresh new look. I know, Doc. But I just don't have the money to pay a designer for a custom website. You don't need to pay for a custom design when you use flow themes. Flow themes? Yes, flow themes. They have a wide variety of WordPress themes for the modern creative. Not just photographers, but for videographers, florists, wedding planners, and much more. But are they customizable to suit my needs? Yes. Every theme is totally customizable. 
Flow Themes has even launched a new line of Flex Themes, which allows you to customize your website further than ever before while maintaining a cohesive, professional-looking theme. Where can I get one, Doc? Go to nerdyphotographer.com slash recommends slash flow themes to learn more and see what they have to offer. Thanks, Doc. I really appreciate it. Good, good. Uh, but now we're going to need to talk about what's wrong with your uvula. My uvula? What is it? It's a small teardrop-shaped piece of soft tissue that hangs down in the back of your throat, but that's not important right now. Hey, welcome back. It appears that Hamdo Bane has once again slipped away from us. I can't believe he fell for the old hiding in the sarcophagus switcheroo trick. We can track his hyperspace signature and triangulate where he is headed. You can? Well, get on that. I'd like to thank Erica Lehman and Lindsay Turner for being on this episode. It takes a lot to be able to talk about your grief. Uh, you can find Erica on Instagram at Sweet Alice Photography, and you can see more of her work at SweetAlicePhotography.com. Lindsay Turner can be found at LindsayVictoriaPhotography.com and on Instagram at Lindsay Victoria Photography. As always, thank you for listening to the Nerdy Photographer Podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Facebook at Nerdy Photographer and on Instagram and Twitter at The Nerdy Photo. And you can also find me on the Clubhouse app at KCF Photo. We have the coordinates, Captain. Excellent. We're coming for you, Hamdo. Until next time, everybody, stay safe and stay nerdy.